Hello and welcome to Switch Scheme and my new series, Let's Discuss That. This is a review series where we have more of a discussion rather than a cookie cutter scoreboard type review about video games. I'll discuss the story, graphics, performance, audio and value, and discuss whether or not it's truly worthy of your time. If you enjoyed the content, drop a like and sub, and let me know what game you want me to discuss next. In our inaugural episode, we're going to be discussing Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, a game that I'm already seeing labeled all over in headlines as the worst game of 2024. And I'm going to be honest with you, I don't agree with those headlines. I do not think that this game is as much of a dumpster fire as others would lead you to believe, and I hope you stick with me to find out why. First, let's take a look at the story. So the story is pretty basic, and when it comes to looter shooters, it makes a lot of sense. I'll keep it as simple as I can so we can avoid spoilers, but TLDR, Aliens have invaded, Brainiac is involved, and the Justice League is being mind controlled. There you go. Now you know why the Suicide Squad has to go in and quote, kill the Justice League. It's not the most compelling story, and to be honest, I don't really come into a game like this expecting Game of Thrones seasons one through four level of writing or storyboarding. I just expect a competent title that's gonna tell me a story that makes me believe the reasons that these things are happening. And so far, even though I've only been able to play a few hours, which we'll discuss later, I believe it, and I'm into it. There were a couple characters that I really didn't enjoy. For example, I found Green Lantern's character to be kind of just eh. He was very one note and bland, and I found no interest in him. Um, Wonder Woman, again, one note, not really much more to her personality other than I am Wonder Woman, do what I say, you are all trash. And I understand that that's the, the you know, the, the theme here because it is the Suicide Squad. These are technically villains and she's not going to be nice to them. And I get that and I have no issue with that. But I didn't get to see any character growth or anything out of that because, again, as I'll say later, I didn't get to play this for very long. A couple characters I really enjoyed, I actually like the way they've been handling The Flash so far. He had a really cool sequence with Batman. And let's talk about Batman. I only got to play this game for five hours, and there is a sequence within those first five hours where you get to go through the Bat Museum, and that was one of the coolest sequences I've seen in a DC-related game in a long time. And it was basically Rocksteady's way of saying, hey, we could make a horror Batman game, but this is the Suicide Squad, let's, you know, let's dial it back. So for me, the story is, I don't even want to say hit or miss. The story for me was a hit. I enjoyed it. It wasn't, again, it wasn't the best story ever made. It wasn't going to be breaking comic book records, nothing like that. But for a looter shooter, it set up the premise perfectly. The world is being invaded by aliens and Brainiac is involved. The Justice League is mind controlled. You are the Suicide Squad who now has to resolve this problem. Go. It makes sense. Hordes of aliens are coming, hence the inevitable amount of loot that you're going to find. It all works, to, at least within this package. Now, let's go ahead and discuss the gameplay. The gameplay is one of the things where I am very hit or miss on, unlike the story. For one, let's talk about traversal. The traversal of the characters is actually the one thing that I really enjoyed. Every character can basically run around and fly through the game as much as you want, depending on how you manage their, their, uh, their status bars and stamina bars. For example, um, Harley Quinn has a Spider-Man like grappling hook where she can grapple onto this bat wing thing that's always following her and swing throughout the city. Uh, you have King Shark who can just charge up his abilities because he's just naturally like this and he can just leap and bounce huge amounts. Think of like when they say Superman can jump over a skyscraper. Basically, King Shark is doing that throughout the game. Um, but my favorite hands down is going to be Captain Boomerang. He basically is able to acquire, and is pretty much explained in the first section of the story, so this isn't, again, a spoiler or anything. He's basic, he's able to um, obtain a speed gauntlet, which allows him to be the Flash. And when you throw your boomerang, you have to watch the boomerang and see how far away it is from you. Or if you're trying to like land on a building, make sure it's right above the building and then you let go of the button and he zooms to the where the boomerang is. And you can do that a couple times to get more speed or to get more distance. And it's just really fun controlling him as you're trying to get from place to place. It's a really fun way to traverse the world. And that's really necessary because the city is pretty big. I mean, it's not huge. We're not talking, it's not Spider-Man, um, you know, the Spider-Man on PS5 levels of huge, but it's pretty big. And it gives you a lot of traversal options because you're going to be fighting things on the streets. You're going to be fighting enemies at the tops of buildings. You're going to be fighting enemies on bridges. And you have to be able to get in and around them in order to get, you know, the damage in. A lot of them like to put up shields or they like to teleport from building to building. And being able to traverse quickly from spot to spot really makes the the, the combat and the movement feel dynamic and really fast. Um, speaking of the combat, this is where things start to fall off a cliff for me, unfortunately. I, this is a third person shooter, and when I'm thinking third person shooters, I go to my favorites, right? Uh, the Last of Us, Red Dead Redemption 2, the Resident Evil remake, stuff like that. 
and when i fire a gun in one of those games i feel the impact of that weapon i feel uh the recoil you it sounds good it sounds meaty and chunky mechanical and it just feels good to fire a weapon in those games i didn't feel that at all in this game not once uh the guns are kind of cartoony in a way and, and i don't know how else to explain it but for example if i'm playing king shark he's got a mini gun as a starting weapon i didn't feel like i was firing the mini gun in predator into the forest i felt like i was just holding a button and watching numbers come up on my screen it really wasn't powerful feeling i don't know how else to explain it you kind of just shoot at it and it calculates damage and tells you what damage you're doing it doesn't feel punchy now there are some obvious changes to that depending on the character you play um, and what weapons you use. If you're using, for example, uh, Captain Boomerang, he, his combat is probably the most fun in my opinion. You throw your boomerang, it hits the enemy, knocks them into the air, and then you can kind of juggle them with your weapon. That was fun, but only for a little while. After a while, it was so repetitive because that's how you had to engage every enemy as Captain Boomerang because he's using a shotgun. And again, I'm going by their starting weapons here. You can change their weapon loadout however you see fit, but I'm just discussing to you how it is when you start the game and your first experience. Deadshot and, and Harley Quinn, they're kind of the same. They're just third person shooters with assault rifles or some machine guns. They didn't feel different in any way. Um, yes, they have quote abilities, but they're not really abilities that change who they are. And, and that's kind of the other thing that really frustrates me about the gameplay. They all have an ultimate, right? King Shark does a, a cannonball, basically. Uh, Captain Boomerang does this, it probably has the coolest animation where he just does this huge AoE where he's zipping around, throwing his boomerang, doing massive damage. Um, Deadshot does an AoE in front of him, and Harley Quinn does like a slide tackle out of the air into a small area in front of her. But the problem is, is it all equates to the exact same thing an AOE attack in the small little area in front of your character. And speaking of, you know, kind of the same, when you look at King Sharks, his is the most basic. He already has the ability, and one of his main abilities is while he's running and jumping these large amounts that I told you about, he can ground pound. He can hold control. Again, I'm playing on PC. He can hold control and slam into the ground if you're doing it from a high enough height. Well, guess what his ultimate is? he goes really high and then he rolls into a ball and slams the ground so he can already do a ground pound and his ultimate is a ground pound it just didn't feel cool like how much more fun would it have been if he turned into a sharknado or something right he held out his arms and started spinning around and doing a bunch of aoe damage um harley quinn hers is just a slide tackle that's it it wasn't cool or interesting it was just a slide tackle Ooh, like i can do that in call of duty so for me, there's just a lot of missed opportunity when it comes to making me feel like a character rather than just a generic person. And that's kind of where things change when it comes to like the animations, the facial features, the characters when it comes to how they talk. That That's fine. Each one is different in its own way. And that's something I'm going to talk about later in the technical issues uh, and technical specs. But for me, none of the characters felt different enough for me to care who I was playing. They traverse a little differently, and the combat is slightly different between all four, but other than that, it's pretty much the same. Then you have the talent tree system. Now, I'm a, I'm a slut for talent trees. I love them. I'm an OG uh, WoW player, and I love the original WoW talent system, and when they changed it in Cataclysm, I hated it, and I'm so glad they've gone back. I love lots of options and the ability to min-max how I want to play. I want to play it in a certain way and let me do things my way rather than telling me how I have to do it. That's how I enjoy playing video games. And here there's, there's a plethora of talents to choose from, but at the end of the day, it all equates to the exact same thing. Do X for combo, get more damage. That's it. It's not, Hey, you know, you're King Shark, go on an eating rampage because you took this talent. Now you can eat seven in enemies instead of two. No, you don't really get anything cool like that. It's literally just bonuses to damage. For example, uh, Captain Boomerang, I, I'm gonna talk mostly about Captain Boomerang because he's the one I had the most fun playing. One of his first talents is a slot machine and you see this little slot machine above your head go off um, every once in a while while you're doing combos. And that's really fun and exciting, right? Everyone loves a good slot machine, but it always turns into three coins. It always ends up being a damage bonus and that's it. 
It's just a damage bonus. And there's no chance or luck to it, which is what you expect in a slot machine. So my question is one, why make it a slot machine in the first place? Why not just make it something, you know, funny and Captain Boomerang related? And two, why is it just a, a damage boost? Everything is just a damage. And to me, that killed the fun of the game. That is the number one reason why I did not want to keep playing the game is because I found the combat so underwhelming. And if you're into that kind of combat, right? Third person shooter, uh, lots of movement and traversal, lots of dodging, lots of jumping and running around and trying to you know, get behind enemies to shoot them. You might find fun in this game. You absolutely might. If you don't want to manage a bunch of abilities like in the Avengers games, that's fine. You're gonna enjoy this game. The combat will fit for you. But for me, I just found the combat a little lacking in that punchy aspect. Now let's discuss the, um, the technical side of things because this is where we have to unfortunately basically not recommend the game right now. Now I played on PC and your experience might change whether you're on a console or if you're also on PC. And I've only been able to play four and a half hours of this game. And the reason is because it crashed seven times in a two hour period. Initially, I thought this was a me problem, but I've done some research and it looks like a lot of people are having crashing issues where the whole screen just kind of freezes and you can't really do anything. It's just a pure system crash. Now, thankfully, I was streaming while this was happening. Um, I do stream on Twitch and I actually just now started being able to stream on YouTube. They gave me the permissions to do so and everyone was watching as this was happening. I thought initially it was my system, but even after a full system restore, I tried the game again off stream and it's still crashing while nothing else is. I can play all my other games perfectly fine, but for some reason, this game just will not function properly. So I cannot give it a further re recommendation, at least on the PC front. In terms of technical, I will say the game looks really good. I had no issues graphically. Um, the graphics options were really nice. Uh, you can scale things up and down depending on your system. There was a really weird frame rate cap. It will ask you what you want to cap your frames at, and it's like 30, 55, and 82. There's no 60, which is really weird because for me, when I stream, I want everything to run at 60 because that's the metric on how I gauge you know, my bandwidth, um, my bit rate and all that. If I can't run it at 60, I can't tell if everything is running optimally alongside the game. So for me, having to run it at 55, so it's fluctuating between you know 50 and 55, which is noticeable to some extent, especially when you're used to 60 all the time, it just seemed like a strange option. When it comes to technical stuff, um, I will say some things that I was really impressed uh, impressed by were the facial animations and the graphics of the characters. I really like this version of Harley Quinn. Um, she's the very stereotypical, you know, rock steady Harley Quinn. There's really nothing different there, but her facial animations, the way her hair looked, the way she carried herself, the voice acting of the characters, and this includes all of them, mind you, not just Harley, but Harley was definitely a standout. Their facial animations just fit perfectly uh, like the camera's lingering on one character and Harley Quinn makes a face because you know she's being silly you can feel that silliness she doesn't even have to say a word you can feel everything she's saying just in that facial animation and I think they did a phenomenal job there and they really do deserve some credit for that you know whether they did mocap or whatever it is they did it came out really well and I really do like the characterizations that they did for all of them right you had Batman looking you know stoic and serious all the time you had Wonder Woman looking like she's pissed off all the time you kind of can tell all their emotions by their facial features and the way their faces kind of carried themselves rather than what they were saying. And I still say Harley Quinn was the best out of all of them. Uh, on the audio front, everything was fine. I had no issues. Like I said, the voice acting for me was really good. It was really top notch. Full credit to the team for that. They did a good job. Um, Captain Boomerang, Harley Quinn were the standouts for me. King Shark was fine, but I'm so used to Sylvester Stallone's King Shark. And this King Shark in this game is a little smarter than that one. Um, that's not a bad thing, but it just kind of threw me off because I'm expecting, you know, you know, the, the one in the movie, he's like book and bird. And this one is having full blown conversations. That was a little bit of off putting for me just in terms of what my expectations were. But it doesn't ruin the experience. If you know King Shark and you're a, you're a fan of that character, obviously this will be fine. As for the future of the game, it's a game as a service. But I will be honest at this point with how much negative publicity this game has received. 
I don't know how popular this game is going to become down the line. There is potential, and I think that if the team really buckles down and puts in some effort to kind of fix some of these graphical issues, some of these technical issues, I think they actually have a good game here. And like I said, I don't think this is a dumpster fire. I don't think this is worst game of the year already. I think this is a middle of the road, six out of 10, seven out of 10. If it's what you're looking for, if you're looking for a DC looter shooter where you play the Suicide Squad, you're killing aliens and you're fighting the Justice League, then guess what? You're gonna get exactly what you want. For me personally, I would rather play this over something like the Avengers game. And that game was a lot of fun. I actually really enjoyed it, but I found that game unbelievably boring after a while because the story was so short and the, the end game was so unbelievably bland. Um, and I think that the Suicide Squad lends itself to do more with what it has. It has the foundation for a lot. And, and it, you know, the multiplayer that's there, right? You can have up to four people playing all the different characters, doing these missions. And I think that that foundation is solid. I can only go based on what little bit I got to play because of the constant crashes. After, um, after my fourth hour and like the 20th crash, I couldn't play anymore. I had to contact Steam, request a refund, and just say, look, I'm going to put out my discussion, good or bad, let you guys know up front, hey, this is my discussion of the game, this is my review of the game. Knowing that I had these technical issues, I cannot speak to the end game, and I know that a lot of people are going to be able to speak to the end game. But that wasn't my my uh, experience, and I got to give you an honest experience that I had. And unfortunately, I cannot recommend this game right now. And unfortunately, I think that lack of recommendation is going to be the death knell of this game because it is a games as a service. They're going to be looking at the ongoing income that they receive to kind of you know dictate how future uh, development goes. And if we can't recommend the game now they're not gonna be making the money that they need to further develop the game. Now, what my hope is, as I was saying earlier, is they patch in everything they need to patch so that way the game can run smoothly, so that way a lot of these things are fixed, you know, maybe change up some things around uh, in the technical front so that way it looks better, it runs better, and hopefully people will then start to go, hey, you know what, maybe with these fixes, the game is a little bit better, let me hop in now and try it out. And I will be honest with you, like I said, it's not a bad game. It is not a trash or a dumpster fire game. It is fine. It is going to give you what you want, albeit it could be a little bit better. Thanks you guys for joining me on Let's Discuss That, where we take a look at a game that I've been playing and I tell you my experience and discuss whether or not it's worthy of your time. If you enjoyed this content like i said drop a like and sub it helps me out immensely and let me know if you like this format it's a lot easier than the typical review format where we have to do everything so structured i kind of am able to just speak my mind and really let you know how i honestly feel rather than feeling like i gotta hit certain bullet points if you have any recommendations on other games you want me to discuss let me know in the comments down below and until next time have a great day